All right, friends. Uh, this is the Managing Leadership Anxiety podcast. Obviously, at this point, you typically hear some cheerful music and my friend Brendan doing the voiceover welcoming us to the show. Today, it's just me. Very quick episode today. And rather than intro music, this is the sound you're going to hear that gets the episode started. Well, that was anticlimactic. I'm having trouble getting my lighter to work. There it goes. Boy, that was a human moment, unedited. Just lighting this candle. Uh, for those of you who are new to me, I'm in a Ignatian prayer group where they gave us a candle. This is back in September. And we light the candle any time that we are keenly aware of God's presence or any time that we need to be keenly aware of God's presence. Because the simple fact is God is invisible and at times can be intangible. And of course, when I say God's invisible and therefore intangible, that does not mean it's God's fault. You know, particularly those of us in the West, which is where most of my listeners are, we run at such a pace. We have so much in our head that that can obscure our awareness to the presence of God. So in September, they handed us a candle and they said, just light it for these two reasons. And I've been a candle lighting junkie ever since. I'm now on, I've, I've lost count. I think this is candle number five. For my loyal listeners, um, you know, you're probably wondering, this is the water mint and eucalyptus candle. Yeah, it's my favorite one so far of all the candles I've used. So I just like this also as a gift to you. Hopefully this is reminding you whether you're on a treadmill or out with your dog or driving or however you listen to your podcasts, that God's with us. And uh, not only is God as close as this uh, flicker I'm looking at, but it's also a reminder that God is as essential to me as the air in my lungs. So what I do when I light a candle is I also just intentionally pause and I take a deeper than normal breath just to remember the presence of God, the goodness of God. And so on this very brief episode, just uh, two or three questions. These are reflective questions and then a quick exciting update and then a quick request. I think this whole episode is probably going to be six or seven minutes total. And then next week we go back to our conversation with Ruth Haley Barton, the wonderful Ruth Haley Barton. So um, the first question is from the Bible. Um, one of the things that we've done on Capable Life, and this is not you know unique to us, is we've tallied the questions that God asks in Scripture. And we've put them in one place because we think that's just an interesting way of reflecting, you know, what's on God's mind? What does God do to dislodge us and disrupt us to be aware of his presence? And there's a pair of questions. He asks uh, questions to Adam and Eve and then again uh, to Elijah when Elijah self-isolated. In fact, he asked both of them when they had moved. They had gotten anxious and then gone away. And so to Adam and Eve, God says, where are you? And to Elijah in 1 Kings, he says, what are you doing here? And so I just pause and invite you to consider those questions. Where are you right now? If, if you had to answer that question in the form of a prayer, where would you tell God you are? And then to Elijah, it's a little more pointed where he says, what are you doing here, Elijah? You know, Elijah had uh, battled Ahab. And then he had gone into a deep depression and self-isolated and then did what so many of us do when we're in self-pity, when we self-isolate, is Elijah was the one who had moved far away. And then he popped up and he saw that no one was with him, even though he's the one that moved away. And he said, uh, man, no one knows what it's like to be me. And that's about the time where God came along and said, what are you doing here? Sometimes our anxiety just gets us into a place that's foreign, where we feel alone, where we feel like no one understands. And sometimes we need God just to come and gently ask us, what are you, what are you doing here? What are you trying to accomplish? What, what do you believe here? And so simply the invitation to pause right now, just pause. This is the first space work we do when we notice what's going on in me, the foundational idea in our Capable Life teaching, is if you're not aware of what's going on with yourself, you cannot possibly connect to God or another person. I know that's provocative, but that's the foundation of what we teach. To be aware of what's going on in you is the beginning of being aware of God and actually being able to connect to other people, actually be able to see what's going on with others. 
So this question, where are you and what are you doing here? Very simple and, and really helpful. And that leads to the second question, and this will be the last one for this podcast. Who told you? Adam and Eve, when when God found them and they started this dialogue, they they spit lies to God. They said things that aren't true. You know, you know whether we're lying or not, anxiety teaches us lies. It puts us in a false reality. And one of the most helpful things you can do with anxiety is think about the way you think and try to get clear on whether you're believing something that is true or not. Chronic anxiety particularly is generated by assumptions. That's what makes us chronically anxious. We have assumptions about ourselves, We have assumptions about others. We have assumptions about God, the way God sees us. And it's a really powerful question for God, who is truth, to ask us, who told you? And so I'm just going to pause and invite you just to consider the assumptions that you are holding right now. What assumptions are you holding today as you listen to this podcast that maybe until even you started listening to this show, you weren't sure they were assumptions. You never tested them. You're just living out of them. What assumptions are you holding right now that maybe God's inviting you to trust God with? Hand them over to God. And if you're not sure, then the brave step of reaching out to a friend or a community and inviting them into your assumptions. This is very brave work. It's very vulnerable. But when you do that, you discover um, human-to-human freedom. You discover the goodness of God through the body of Christ. Okay, so the first question, which is really a pair of questions, where are you? And then uh, what are you doing here? That's the pair. Then the second question, who told you? It really is stunning to me what I believe that is not true and how I operate out of those beliefs and how much it makes me anxious. So just a brief couple of questions. And the reason we're doing an unusual episode today is two reasons. One is I'm just giving my volunteer team a week off. I've got these amazing volunteers, Eric, who very faithfully runs our audio, and Justin, who runs our graphic design and our web uploading, and Chris, who actually runs most things at Capable Life, or she runs a lot of our logistics and our operations and just giving them a week off. So that's why there's no editing and fades and music, just me. Um, The second reason is because we've launched the Kickstarter of our journal. Uh, My wife, Lisa, and I, Lisa taking um, so many of the tools that she's been trained in and practices in her private therapy practice, and then me with the tools that I've developed in systems theory and as I've done these workshops, we've combined forces And we've made this wonderful, beautiful high-end journal called the Calm, Aware, Present Journal. It's a 12-week journey to go from being managed by anxiety to managing it. It's a 12-week journey where we take you on this three-step process of notice, name, diffuse. You know, one of the things that anxiety does is it actually numbs you and numbs your awareness. So you end up being really anxious. You don't even know you're anxious. So the first step is noticing And if you can notice you're anxious, we actually invite you to get off the treadmill of anxiety and and pause so you can name what's generating it. And oftentimes it is generated by assumptions and false beliefs, but also sometimes there's sophisticated uh, reasons that you're anxious. So notice and name. And then the final step being diffuse. Now, it's not a pure three-step process because by noticing and naming, you're already diffusing. In fact, that's 50% of the diffusion right there. But then once you've got your anxiety in your grip rather than it having you in its grip, you can then give it to God. You can literally diffuse it. You can displace it with love or laughter or vulnerability, which is usually the way you displace it too, love and laughter. So notice name diffuse. This is the three-step process we lead you through over 12 weeks. In the journal, we begin with a couple of core foundational tools. And then week one, is a tool for the week, and for the first eight weeks of the journal, a new tool. Now, here's what's interesting is every day we simply have a list of questions, like the two I gave you on this podcast, except there's a whole slew of questions, because it's not about daily progress. That's not how anxiety management works. You don't make tiny progress every day. It's more of an intentionality that you set your week to noticing, naming, and diffusing. And so every day, a set of questions and all kinds of room in the journal for you to address any of the questions you want and all the questions are designed to help you notice, name, and diffuse. 
So you start the week with a new tool, a new way of seeing, a new thing to try. And then every day a set of questions to reflect. Then we offer a midweek reflection with an extra tool, kind of helping you dial in on a Wednesday or whatever midweek for you. And then an end of week meditation where you and the Lord can really do some work together. And then the next week, a new tool, we go again. Eight weeks of tools, and then four weeks of guided practice of the eight tools. This is the problem with humans, is we always want as much progress as we can, as quick as we can, but that's not the way anxiety works. We give you eight weeks of new tools, and then you practice them each week, but then in the final four weeks, we just guide you to integrate all of the eight tools into your life. And then the back of the journal, these amazing things. We have the 31 universal sources of anxiety. We have all the questions that God asks. We have helpful prayers. We have a life-giving list and a workload scrub. But also in the journal, when you open up the box, we're putting it in this gorgeous box. We want the unboxing experience to be delightful to you because we know that delight and beauty is part of managing anxiety. So when you open the box, you find yourself with a family edition life-giving list, this big fold-out high gloss document that not only you but people in your household can fill out together so that each person can list what's life-giving to them and then at the bottom a summary what's life-giving to everybody in the household so the reason i bring that up is our kickstarter is live right now and you can click the link in the show notes and go back the project now i've noticed there's a little bit of misunderstanding on kickstarter it is not a donation it's a it's pre-funding a product or a project so what's true is we have been pre-funded. We set a goal for $8,000. As recording to this podcast, we're up to $12,000. So we're funded. But it was never really about us getting donations. It's about pre-funding us to be able to place an order for several journals. And so now that we're pre-funded, we went ahead and placed that order for journals. Now it's about getting the journal into as many anxious hands as possible. So if you haven't had a chance to pre-order one yet, they're $29 on Kickstarter. Uh, there'll be more than that when we list them on Amazon. But if you want to get a journal first, Kickstarter is the way to go. So you can go to kickstarter.com and you can search for Calm, Aware, Present. Or you can click the link in the show notes. It'll take you right to the link where you can make a commitment too. Now you'll see on the rewards there that we have some extra bonuses. You can download the PDF digitally. Some of you might want to buy the video series that goes along with the journal. If you're a Capable Life member, or if you're a Right Now Media member, you already get those videos for free. This is also a great opportunity to join Capable Life. You actually get a free journal included if you join Capable Life there on Kickstarter. But we're running this through May, the first couple of days of June, then we close it down. And then the very first journals will be delivered in August. So if you pledge on Kickstarter, you're among the very first to get the journals. And then once everyone's been fulfilled on Kickstarter, then we load it onto Amazon and people can buy it on Amazon September and following. So part of what I wanted to just come on the show is just to celebrate that we're able to fund this journal. We're really excited to get into people's hands. We have designed it for adults and teenagers. If you have preteens in your household, they can do a journal as well. There's illustrations in here. There's bullet journal paper, dotted paper, not just lined. There's even fun things like listing your favorite songs. We've actually got room for you to make a playlist on the journal. And we have all kinds of fun ideas to go along with it. If you open it up, you'll see there's a QR scan where you can get a weekly email from us to go along, a devotional email, some extra tools that no one else gets. And that's where we're going to send you some extra resources for free starting in August when the journal shows up. So we're, we're really excited about this. It's $29. US And I have many, many international listeners and so, yes, if you're international, you can back a journal as well. And yes, also, we're just really sorry for how much international shipping costs. It's just crazy. So that's why your journals are more expensive, because we're shipping them all from the U.S. So the Calm Aware Present Journal, you can click on the link in the show notes. Uh, or if it's easier for you, just go to stevecusswords.com. I've got a little pop-up right there on, on my website that'll take you. Or go to kickstarter.com type in the Calm, Aware, Present Journal. We would love for you to back the project. Not really about us so much, but so that you can get a journal, you can get journals for your loved ones, that we can get these tools into anxious hands and really help you go on this 12-week journey with us. So 
Hey, thanks for listening. Next week, we'll be back with Ruth Haley Barton for our second episode, and then we'll be running all six episodes uh, from there out. And then we come pretty close to the end of the season. All right, folks, whatever day you're listening to this, I hope, I hope it's a great day where you can really connect with the Lord.